Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program in the series that I'm calling Escaping Kerbin, where we go and we try to visit some of the outer planets, like Duna and Eve. So today is actually going to be a pretty big episode. Um, we are making our very first milestone of sending our very first probe out. Uh, we've done satellites before, but those have been primarily for communications. Today is going to be in the name of science. So I have a couple contracts uh, to look at, one of them, uh, two of them actually being landing on uh, the MUN. One of them, uh, only one of them requires a return, um, but both of them will yield me some pretty good money. And as you can see up there in the top, we've got quite a bit due to uh, all the contracts that we did in episode two. We made about 19, or uh, 1,900,000, and then in launching all the comm satellites, we spent about 400,000, so we're not doing as great as we could, but hopefully not only completing the milestone of landing on another celestial body, but um, also the money from the contracts we get there should help bring us back up again and keep us going, because it's not going to be long until we need to set up another communication satellite network on Minmus. But anyways, today we are going to be, um, uh, I'm going to look at science real fast, because I, I only have 22.3, so I don't have enough to buy anything, but it, I'm just, every single node has something that I, I would like to unlock. Um, so it's going to be difficult to try to determine what gets unlocked first. Yeah, so I was just looking through the contracts. So now it's going to be about creating a probe. And a lot of my probes, early probes, look the same. It's uh, usually the Probodobodyne hex on top with uh, a little service bay. And uh, as you're probably familiar with by now, this uh, little science service bay that I end up making. Uh, I, I'm using tweak scale there to change the battery's uh, size. Uh, it also does change the battery's capacity, so it doesn't hold the same amount that it did when it was larger. So I do take a little bit of a hit on on that, but I like the way that it fit, looks and fits better. Oh, I go ahead and tuck in my communi uh, communication in here. When it comes to uh, uh, Lunar Lander Probe, which I am naming this one the Parakeet, uh, when it comes to the Lunar Lander Probe, uh, compact compactness is key. You want to get everything as tightly knit as possible. You want to leave no space unused. So, we do use a little bit of clipping to get that done, you know, to make sure, because the magnetometer rubens would be sticking out of the door, so we want to keep that in. I like to think of it as the idea is that those batteries that were there were built with the magnetometer included in. Uh, I have some pretty good solar panels, but they don't uh, retract. So I end up putting them uh, on some decouplers, so that way I could just kick them off before re-entering the atmosphere. And then I put some communication dishes to make sure that we always have communication with both uh, Kerbin and the system around the MUN. And then lastly, I put on uh, some radiators to help us on, on re-entry. And so this right here, oh, and as you see, I'm uh, lowering the at ablator in the heat shield to save uh, a little bit of weight because I'm not going to need all of it. So I go ahead and arm my chute and uh, set up my descent action stage. And uh, I should have added onto them the decouplers. Uh, I will find out a little bit about that later. Um, it would have it would have just been easier to just instead of trying to activate it through the staging system sequence just to have them attached to the descent action group as well. So yeah, so that, that's it. That's our little parakeet probe. That's, um, that's all you need. So now it's just a matter of uh, creating a system that will bring it back from the MUN. Uh, when designing your uh, probes and your rockets, it's always a good idea to design your way backwards. So right now we're working on uh, the piece that will be both landing and returning. Because uh, I have those fuel, tank, uh, those fuel ducts that I'm going to be... Uh, using to refuel the lander right before we take off so that way when we start to head home we'll have that full middle tank um, at our disposal. Once again I put cameras on here. It's not a complete waste because I do end up looking through the cameras at least once 
um, I think actually just once, but, um, you know, I, I, I did use them, so therefore they're not a complete waste, but I don't, I didn't really need to use it, uh, cameras were a lot bigger of a deal in my IVA series, because we had no other way of seeing, uh, outside our crafts, but, uh, in the, in the standard KSP, the standard EVA view, uh, I just, uh, I haven't been, haven't been using them as much as, as I used to. So, when, when that happens, they basically just become a waste of money. But, our racket right now is sitting at 63000 like, that's actually not too bad. It's not too expensive. Uh, so, I briefly installed a mod that gave me access to camera tools like this, that would put the cameras in different angles. I played around with it a bit, but I, I gen generally didn't like it. I did like this shot right here. That was fun. But I generally didn't like it. Um, it became too much of a hassle. So uh, you will see some funky camera angles here off at the beginning. Um, and then I basically just stopped using it. Yeah, you can see it right there on the right. It's camera tools. Um, I'm sure it's great. I just don't know how to use it very well. And the, the little bit of testing that I did just kind of... I didn't like it, so I ended up uh, uninstalling that mod. So now it's just a, a matter of a standard uh, ascent and orbit. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be very nice once we uh, get our extra planetary launch pad set up on Minmus, and uh, we can launch with, with barely any effort won't have the need for these big lower uh, stages, these huge heavy thruster, uh, heavy uh, thrust to weight ratio, you know, none of that. We can just ease our way off. So yeah, so in the previous episode, I, I couldn't get a polar orbit for the life of me, and in this one, I, that's all I seem to be able to get. So I just take what I can get. I go ahead and send myself out to the moon. I did like those little bottom lights. Uh, that little view right there was kind of fun. It was interesting. Always remember to put lights on your craft. You never know when you're going to be stuck in darkness. Yeah, see, I'm coming over the top, but I decided to go with it instead of changing my angle. Um, I, uh, in the midst of it, I decide that it's going to be a polar orbit that I'm going to, or uh, a polar landing site. Is that what I'm going to aim for? I, I, I thought about it, I'm like, well, I'm going to be sending a crewed uh, mission up here pretty soon, and I don't want to land in one of the common places, like the highlands, the lowlands, the midlands, or, or even one of the specific craters and grab the science there because I'm going to be doing that, you know, very soon anyways. So I thought about it, I'm like, where's a place that I never go? Where's a place that I could send a probe that's, you know, hard to reach, inhospitable? And, and I came up with the South Pole, which is interesting because I haven't been there too often. I've been, I have been there, but um, it's not my typical landing spot. And so uh, I was excited to... I was excited to see it in this uh, in this playthrough. I go ahead and wait a couple orbits because I want my comm satellite to be in range or in view of me. Um, so I have it at the lower aspect or the lower orbit of the planet. So I go ahead and plot in my landing zone. It's not great because um, I don't have a lot of light to deal with because of you know where I'm deciding to land, but um, there's there's enough. And then I'm looking at this rocky terrain and going, oh no, what have I done? This is going to be too much. And it's right about here when I notice uh, I'm missing something. Can anyone tell me what I'm missing? Landing gear. I'm about to land in the rockiest part of the mud. Uh, in relatively the dark with no landing gear. So this is why you test your <laughs> test your rockets and you think of everything. You try to think of absolutely everything. Um, or at least, you know, think of the bare minimum. 
Think of the basic needs uh, that a lander would need. Landing legs. So what I do is I get myself ready and what I'm planning on doing is just touching down. Uh, that was a little scary. But I just plan on touching down and then running my science experiments while I'm landed at the poles. And then taking off quickly. Just getting myself out of there as fast as I can. So I go ahead and touch and then science. I do the science action group. Go ahead and collect all that. And then since I'm deciding on basically just heading home, I go ahead and do the second set of science action group to ground the uh, science in low space above the moon. So, uh, even though we only briefly grazed the surface, uh, we were able to get what we needed to get done. Uh, it would have been nice to have the landing legs there to be able to kind of really be able to call and prep, but we didn't have that luxury. So as you see, I pulled the contracts up to the right, and I have Land on the Mun is uh, activated. But the other one, the, the Land on the Mun probed contract that I have, I have a couple contract packs installed, and so every now and then there there's a little glitchiness or a little bugginess. Sometimes things don't get solved. And so as you can see, it has the, it, it has the you know, the, the, the probe is the right thing. And the parameter's all right, but for some reason, landed on the mud is not checked off. So I decided, instead of heading straight home, I decided to make another landing, which um, isn't great, you know, because I run the risk of completely flopping over and running the whole mission this way. I could just completely head home and try again later and just take the one solved contract that I have, but uh, I decided to head for the crater. Um, because I figured that would be the easiest, biggest, flattest place that I could find. And I'm just going to try to just land right down on my uh, engine. And just try to be as slow and easy as possible. Uh, the side uh, fuel tanks uh, ran out of fuel. So I kicked them off. Uh, oh, this is uh, the product that was uh, scan set. I was looking to see what the the slope height was, but I couldn't figure that out easily. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss my landing. So I'm just coming down. Yep, see the one time I used the camera, but wasn't wasn't really worth it at the moment. And everything is hinging on this on this one landing, so I didn't want to, you know, pay attention to other stuff and mess it up. So yeah, so the contract is bugged because I definitely just landed again. And I let myself stay there. It did seem sp sp sped up. Yeah. <laughs> it did seem sped up, but I actually sat there for a second before, uh, basically as long as I could before uh, I took off because I wanted to make sure that that contract was completed in all aspects. But I feel okay saying that it is because we had a, a duplicate contract to land on the mud, and that one was completed, so... Uh, with that, we're just going to head home. We're going to call it a success. So yeah, go ahead and we go to our epilapsis and bring down our periapsis until it's just below the surface. So we're looking at about a 68... Uh, 68,000 meter periapsis, so we'll be skimming the surface, um, but it's not going to be enough to capture us. And when we go down here at the, the new periapsis into the atmosphere, we go ahead and plot a maneuver to drastically bring down our um, orbit uh, using the last of our fuel. We can't bring it down to a completely reasonable height, so what we end up doing is we also add a little bit of a radial out uh, to our maneuver here, and that that will not only shorten our orbit from the apoapsis side, but it will change the, the periapsis side. Oh, and I accidentally staged, I was trying to get rid of the solar panels, and I staged the uh, separator between the main probe and the booster, so I was kind of powerless there as it was pushing me. Um, Thankfully, you know, the fuel ran uh, ran out pretty quickly, and uh, I was able to maintain control. But I go ahead and kick off the um, solar panels there, and uh, I hit the descent action group, and now it is out of my hands. Um, 
It's just a matter of coming through the air and air breaking. So I already made it through the atmosphere once pretty easily, because like again, I said it, we were only we we're only just barely below the surface. But now is going to be the true test on whether or not everything was created and planned correctly. Do I have enough ab ablator? Ablator? How do you say that? Ablator? I think it's ablator. Um, you know, are my radiators going to be able to dissipate enough heat? Are those uh, uh, Communication dishes gonna catch fire because they're popping out. Are my chutes gonna deploy too soon and get ripped up in the heat? Are they gonna deploy too late and I'm gonna break upon impact? There's there's so much that is hinging on these last few moments, um, and I'm going to do them all in the dark. <laughs> so I watch uh, bated breath as my craft heats up and comes uh, barreling back towards the surface. Uh, our apoapsis height is pretty low as we're coming in, so our angle is fairly good. Um, so I don't have too much of a worry there, but... And then, just slowly, in the front of the horizon, we see that we're coming near the KSC. We're coming down. And then the first set of drug shoots a pop, and then the main chute pops, and then everything... Everything opens. And we come down at, a, at an easy six meters per second and that is a mission that is a mission pass that is success so we are so very excited we have so much new science to unlock stuff um, our next mission is going to be uh, a, a crewed mission out to the mud and we're going to be doing that in the next episode so this is where I'm going to be leaving you I'm leaving this probe uh, Someone from the KSC will have to trek out here and pick it up, collect all that science. But uh, for now, that will be it. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave me a like. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.